Hello, hello, fans of Manchester. Passing the buck. Rio Ferdinand's verdict on controversial Manchester United VAR call. Manchester United were denied the opening goal in a drab first-half encounter with Fulham by a controversial VAR decision. It wasn't pretty, but United have managed to get the job done. A huge result for United to ease a little of the pressure on Ten Hag. Former Manchester United defender Rio Ferdinand was frustrated by the amount of time it took to come to a decision on the controversial VAR call, which denied the Reds the opener versus Fulham. Four minutes passed between Scott McTominay scoring and VAR deciding to overrule the goal for offside. In the build-up, Harry Maguire was deemed to have intervened with play before Alejandro Garnacho could knock the ball back for the goal. However, referee John Brooks was called to the monitor to make the call as it was decided the matter of whether Maguire interfered or not was subjective. The call by the officials was met with anger by Eric Ten Hag and the supporters in attendance, but Ferdinand felt the decision was correct. He told TNT Sports, The first half was tedious. It's been a very slow watch. Fulham have had some good chances, but obviously, the offside decision is the big talking point. The on-field decision is just them, VAR passing the buck, isn't it? That's what it is really, just make a decision. In the end, it's the right decision. And Harry Maguire does influence the defender's decision, his position as well, maybe. So I think it was the correct decision in the end. Adding to this, Joe Cole said, They got it right, but we've seen the debacle that happened at Spurs against Liverpool in recent times. It's a real tricky situation because Maguire is offside, and then he does make an attempt. But for a second, just imagine the pressure VAR is under at the moment. We've had 35-40 minutes to make our minds up about this, and they took four minutes. Yes, but they got it right. Meanwhile, Eric Ten Hag might have been wondering if ever some luck might just go his way. Here at last was his moment, and for the embattled Manchester United manager, it was just in time. On the strike of 90 minutes, a hit from Bruno Fernandes, after Fulham conspired to miss almost half a dozen chances to clear the ball one, united the game. Fernandes had been at his recent low influence, high levels of resentment, setting, and then when the moment came, he took it. One touch to send his fellow Portuguese midfielder Joao Palinha and substitute Sasa Lukic the wrong way, and another to bury it. This was a United win dug out from one of the worst games in recent memory. If Ten Hag was looking for some glimmer of light as to the future at Old Trafford, then this will have required him to squint, although a winning goal at the very death does at least suggest the patient is responding to treatment. Before the Fernandez goal, in the final struggle at the end, it was Fulham showing just as much edge in a game largely devoid of it. Ten Hag had changed what he could. The substitutes Facundo Pellistri and Anthony Martial were at least involved in the chaos in the Fulham area that led to the goal. As with the home win over Brentford, the result was some respite from a performance that posed many questions. Ten Hag left Marcus Rashford out of the squad with what the club said was an injury. Although one can only presume it must have been sustained after Ten Hag's Friday press conference when he reported no problems with the United No. 10. Rashford was on the bench, and without him, freshly chastised for his post-Manchester City birthday party, United struggled in attack. There was also a question over Harry Maguire, who took a blow to his head in the first minute, but played the whole game. At one point, the referee John Brooks seemed to be ordering him off the pitch. He came back on. A dismal first half, from both sides but for United, for whom the pressure is the greater, it was more foreboding. The ball went backwards and Rasmus Hoylund looked about as distant from his teammates as Greenland. No doubt United were trying, but they could barely muster a shot on target. Hojlund would come off before the end. The VAR Jared Gillett had sent referee Brooks to the screen for a Scott McTominay goal on eight minutes. Maguire had been judged offside as he lunged for a Christian Eriksen free kick that was cut back by Alejandro Garnacho. McTominay finished it off, and then came a long and onerous wait for the decision. Otherwise, United looked flat, 
and Fulham little better. Fernandez's harmless shot on 34 minutes was their only other effort on goal in the first half. Antony tried and failed to get past Antony Robinson, although the U.S. international did get booked for one tackle on him. Antony was eventually hauled off in the second half. Two fine saves from Andre Onana kept United in it. Again and again. Man United need a win against Fulham at Craven Cottage in the Premier League this weekend. United lost successive home games 3-0 against City and a weakened Newcastle in the space of just a few days, and the pressure is mounting on Ten Hag to get results after an awful start to the season. A late goal from youngster Garnacho in added time was needed to win 2-1 against Fulham away from home last season. Marco Silva's side are slowly coming into form after enduring a poor start themselves. Regarding the team news, United will be without Casemiro, who is set to be sidelined for several weeks with a hamstring injury, and Lindelof is expected to miss out due to illness. Varane will be available for selection. Ten Hag also branded Rashford unacceptable for attending a birthday party hours after the Derby defeat and the forward has apologized. Rashford is expected to start against Fulham this afternoon. Ten Hag's quotes on Rashford have made the back page slash in every national newspaper that had presence at Carrington yesterday. It was bound to. Given how poor Garnacho was in midweek, the assumption is Rashford will come back into the team today. With the midfield, it could be a selection from a tombola. Ten Hag has got five to pick from, minus Casemiro. Varane has to start today as Lindelof has not traveled due to illness. Lindelof, Martinez, Shaw, and Malaysia are today's absent back four. Meanwhile, Rashford's body language has been an issue all season, and even at Stockport Station yesterday it was noticeable. There is one picture of Rashford sitting on a bench, hands stuffed into his pockets, while players and staff, some will dismiss the over-analysis but the timing, given Ten Hag said his behavior on Sunday evening was unacceptable a couple of hours earlier, cannot be dismissed. If Rashford starts today, United need a performance from a player whose removal against City was cheered by plenty of fans. On the other side, it will be interesting to see who is selected at left back today, with Juan Bissaka surely in line to start on the right. Dalot was dreadful in midweek but there is still an argument that he should be starting ahead of Reguilon in that role. Ten Hag said that players are positive. They want to put this right, and we know the standards here. We have to match them every day. We've had two big setbacks, but we'll fight back. The dressing room is strong, the staff are strong, and this manager is stronger. 